On a dreary August morning, a shroud of mist hung over Westminster Magistrates Court as Kavanaugh appeared through a crackling video link. The air was thick with anticipation as the charges, each laden with the weight of deadly weapons, were read out. The notorious crime lord sat motionless, his arms crossed, his face etched with an unwavering resolve. He absorbed every word with a chilling intensity. But then the judge dropped a bombshell that sent shockwaves ripping through the very marrow of the courthouse, one that would clearly have devastating consequences. The big bomber Kavanaugh, one of the Kinnahan cartel's most senior key members, had struck a pact with the UK's National Crime Agency. The court heard how he had given up a cartel arms dump to save his own skin. In an attempt to secure a reduced prison term, he led the police to the location where 11 lethal weapons lay concealed. Now, the big question is whether this risky move will pay off or backfire horribly. The once revered kingpin now stands branded as a rat, a two-faced hypocrite, while his mob pals are already turning on him. Bomber Kavanaugh clearly has maneuvered himself into a position dreaded by every criminal. Thomas Bomber Kavanaugh is one of Ireland's most notorious crime bosses who eventually led the Kinnahan Cartel's UK division after moving to the UK. Married to Joanne Byrne, Liam and David Byrne's sister, Bomber is a member of the Byrne Crime Organization, a major part of the Kinnahans. However, in 2022, the curtain fell for the kingpin as he was slapped with a 21-year prison sentence for masterminding a 200 million euro drug smuggling operation, which was later reduced to 36 million euro following his guilty plea. Rumors are now swirling about Kavanaugh's dealings with the authorities. As the investigation unfolded, it was revealed that Bomber was more than willing to share inside information about his criminal dealings. His cooperation stands as a stark departure from his past, raising the question, will he give in now that another hefty sentence is hanging over his head, or will he stick to omerta, the code of silence, whatever comes his way? In any case, the Kinnahan cartel's paranoia will probably rise to unprecedented heights. Around 2016-2017, Bomber was at the height of his power and seemed untouchable. But that all changed when in 2017 a raid was conducted on the premises of a Green Oak industrial estate in Dublin and an arsenal of weapons, drugs and documents were found. The raid sparked an intense investigation by Gardi, teaming up with the National Crime Agency in the UK and leading to his current sentence. While serving this hefty sentence, Kavanaugh was recently brought to court on charges related to firearms offences. He stands trial with two co-accused, Sean Kent and Daniel McLaughlin, in the same investigation that has seen his son Jack and brother-in-law Liam Byrne fight extradition proceedings after getting arrested in Spain. Intercepted Encro chat messages linked Liam Byrne and Jack Kavanaugh to the gang, buying firearms to sell to other organized crime mobs. They will be charged with the same offenses as Kavanaugh when extradited. As Kavanaugh faces five firearms-related charges, the court also heard how Kavanaugh had been accused of sourcing 11 firearms found in Newry in May 2021. The fact that one particular gang had so many weapons in a single order just shows how big Kavanaugh's gang was in this trade. From a policing point of view, this case is huge. The investigation revolves around EncroChat's handles and information received about firearms, some of which were stashed in Ireland. The scene took an astonishing turn as the court heard that Kavanaugh had actually guided officers to the location in Newry. Apparently, Kavanaugh organized for the arms to be dumped and their location leaked to the police as part of his plan. NCA officers believe Liam Byrne, Jack Kavanaugh and Sean Kent conspired to pervert the course of justice by planning to reveal the location of weapons in an attempt to get Thomas Kavanaugh a reduced prison sentence. But also, Peter Keating's name was mentioned. He's currently serving 11 years for his role in the failed hit on James Mago Gately. However, it is suspected that Keating still has control over some serious criminals operating in the Clondelkin area. Sean Kent is accused of using the encrypted online chat forum EncroChat from his prison cell to organize the plot. The court has accused him of using the codenames Marco Scafu and Firm Cleaner. 
The initial AncroChat messages were discovered when the French authorities gained access to the communication platform. They then passed intelligence to the NCA. Bomber's criminal network has been taken apart, and a lot of it goes back to the Green Oak Raid in 2017. The uncovering of the weapon stash resulted in the fall of his once powerful gang. Various documents linked to Bomber's gang were found revealing the cartel's key smuggling route for moving drugs and weapons out of Europe into the UK and Ireland. The documents were sent back to the UK, where Bomber was living in the posh Midland suburb of Tamworth and subsequently led to a major NCA investigation into an import-export firm. The raids basically disrupted the Kinahan cartel's money laundering operations. The mob had been using a network of money launderers, organizers without major criminal convictions and seemingly ordinary companies. The police then targeted Bomber's group in the UK and eventually a tracker device on a machine filled with drugs led officials to the port of Dover, allowing officers to probe countless other drug shipments. Thomas Kavanagh was jailed along with his co-accused Gary Vickery and Daniel Canning, but a proceeds of crime case is still underway. It focuses on Kavanaugh's assets, including a haul discovered at his home in Tamworth, Birmingham. The fines in 2017 showed how quickly the Byrne organization, headed by Kavanaugh, got back into business after the Regency Hotel shooting in February 2016. Literally just months after the death of David Byrne, they were already plotting new imports of drugs and weapons. By that Christmas, they were out celebrating in New York after their first shipment had successfully been brought through. But eventually, it all backfired, as it resulted in the guards getting onto Green Oak just a month later. The current investigation into this major firearms plot has obviously been a parallel investigation and most likely will be the end of Bomber's criminal career, if it still existed at all. Any suggestion that he cooperated with the police will mean the Kinnahans are not going to deal with him anymore, and that would only be the best-case scenario, as we all know what happens to rats in the world of organized crime. As Thomas Bomber Kavanagh stands on the precipice of an uncertain fate, a tantalizing question lingers. Will he continue to be a wellspring of revelations, cooperating with authorities in exchange for a chance at clemency? We bet that's something the cartel would want to know as well. After all, he could possibly be hit with another 20 years if convicted for the firearms charge. Cooperation with authorities might well be the only way for Kavanaugh to reduce prison time. In addition, cooperating with authorities could also rub off on the huge criminal assets case that is currently coming his way, worth an estimated 42 million euro. As the former head honcho of the Kinnahan Cartel's UK division, Kavanaugh has a very serious bargaining chip, which probably has Daniel Kinnahan sick with worry. Kavanaugh was regarded as his right-hand man with whom he had joined forces after the Regency, especially as regards to all the murders in the aftermath of the shooting. Both of them lost their key men in a joint attempt to kill James Mago Gately, in which the Estonian hitman Imra Arakas messed up. Kavanaugh's man Peter Keating and Kinnahan's man Douglas Glynn were both jailed. Daniel Kinnahan is obviously going to be wanted in Ireland as soon as they find him, and this situation with Kavanaugh most likely fueling charges is the least he could use. Kavanaugh has been part of the Kinnahan cartel from the very beginning and could be extremely useful for authorities. The cartel is undoubtedly racking its brains to see if it can do anything to stop him. The levels of paranoia in this world are unimaginable. It's clear that Bomber holds secrets that could reshape the criminal landscape forever. At least it seems the end of the Burn crime group is very near. One brother is dead, the other one is fighting extradition in Spain. The son-in-law Bomber is pretty much out of the game, possibly making deals with the police. His son Jack is nabbed too, and cousin Fat Freddy Thompson is serving life for murder. That was it for today's video. What are your thoughts on today's topic? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see our next videos.